So this is the largest grid connected project in the national park system. It is the most innovative project, I think, on the planet. In the case of solar, I must say it's hard to see anything but the brightest of futures. You start with a dream, and then you work your way to reality. This is a great reality. Well, as, as you see here, it's 10 years in the making. Sometimes you have to be patient. Be able to strike when the opportunity is right. The Recovery Act came along quickly. This project was already on the books. You just move it forward through the decision management decision process. And so, uh, you know, plan ahead, but always keep a positive attitude that sooner or later it will happen. It just has to happen because that's the way things are driving us. The, the technology is more prevalent, it's more reliable, it's cheaper, and sometimes now we have building codes that are requiring it. So it's gonna be happening all the more often. When it's all said and done, we're gonna be at about 3,216 panels, thereabouts, um, which, like I said, will produce a, a little bit over 700 kilowatts, which is a lot of power. Every one of these panels was laid by one of my fine employees, and I tell you, this is uh, one special project in one very special place on this planet. It's nice, too, because it, it's not just a shade structure, but we know it's a functioning system and, and that really adds to it and so we help other national parks and you know so many of the national parks are in you know wide open areas that get a lot of sunshine and, and are perfect candidates for it so if we can lead by example then then we've done well. The power of solar energy is not just in the energy it's producing today it's in the savings and energy that it's going to be producing going forward. These systems have you know a 25 year warranty they have design lives of 40, 50 years. So the, the mark that's gonna be left by this system uh, with Yosemite National Park in our country is gonna be for generations to come. Energy conservation should be what's going on. The money that we get on this project is payback. We as employees of the park have to pay back. Turn off the lights, start doing the energy conservation, and then this project will even last longer and be worth more. When I was in the Navy, I always considered the sound of freedom was F-18s or F-14s flying overhead, but actually now, this is the sound of freedom. Sound of freedom from fossil fuels. Great. Solar is going to grow uh, continually. Now, it hasn't grown as much as wind has. Uh, wind was a cheaper technology to put in place, but, but solar is one of those, wherever there's sunshine, there's an opportunity. Now, even where there's not sunshine, there's an opportunity. When, when the, the solar technicians were putting in a system up at Mount Rainier National Park and balancing the system, it was at noon on one of those dark, rainy days at Mount Rainier, just really dark, darker than these shadows here. But the, the solar panels were generating enough electricity when there was no sunshine to be seen to give them the power they needed to work the system. So if, if you can do it in the darkest, wettest days, and still generate electricity, then it's really not limited as to where you can put it. I, I gotta tell you, my car used to be parked out there and I get in at 4.30 and El Pertil is like 104 at 4.30 in the afternoon. I thought, gee, I would sure like to park under a car park. And it just worked that this system worked so well doing that. In our design process in the, in the parks, many times these systems are challenged because the return on investment is such a long time. Well, and I ask people, well, what's the return on investment on the door? Did you do a return on investment on the door or on the sidewalk? Just because it provides a return on your investment doesn't mean it has to be held to a higher standard than those things that don't give you a return on your investment.